Welcome back to CodingCat.dev, where we give you cats the freshest dose of dev snacks. Brought to you by Cloudinary, build faster with AI-powered image and video APIs. Today on the show, we are going to be talking all about Raycast, not Radix, like I almost <laughs> messed up once. Uh, I hope not to do that again. <laughs> we also have Pedro on with us. How's it going, Pedro? Hey, everyone. Yeah, pretty good, thanks. It's been... What did we decide? A year and a half, two years, twenty-one, July of twenty-one-ish. Yeah, yeah, so over May two years. Wow, it's been That's... too long, and things have changed. It sounds like. Yeah. Wow. Since then, well, it's been two years and a bit, and quite a lot has changed, actually. Yeah. I think you. I think you moved, right? Yeah. So last time we talked, um, I was, I believe, I was still living in London, and now I'm living in Barcelona. Nice. Um, if I get that right, or maybe I was already in Barcelona actually, but I moved houses, so I'm living in a new flat, and uh, and I was working at modules at the time, and I think we talked a lot about stitches, right? Mm -hmm. The CSS JS library, and maybe we talked a bit about Radix as well. I don't remember, but possibly. And um, so since then, modules also uh, has been acquired by WorkOS. Uh, Radix mm -hmm. lives on, and it's continues to grow and I love to see it from from the from the outside and uh, but now I'm working at Raycast nice. so now you are not part of the Radix um, ecosystem like maintaining it at all no not really I'm still super close with the team you know like some of my closest friends work on Radix and they have been since the beginning so I follow it very closely and you know I I give a little bit of feedback every now and then, and, and I just rebuilt my latest website like a couple of weeks ago. I launched it, and I use Radix, uh, and I use Radix Themes, which is one of the newest products. So I'm still very much involved, but not really when it comes to like maintenance, if you know what I mean. Yeah, but that that's great to see one of your kind of like babies grow and then go off and be its own <laughs> thing without you. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like reached new heights, I think. And I think yeah. the whole family is proud of that. I'm, I'm really, I didn't realize it, it's kind of funny. Like you always hear parts and pieces, but not like what acquired what. And work OS has been for me popping up like crazy because um, I'm working at a authentication provider, Fusion Auth now. And it's like they're, they're marketing and everything for work OS and the actual product is pretty sweet. So it keeps popping in my feed and, I think they're they're probably paying some some Google search terms and and things like that as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know about that. <laughs> so it's but it's cool that like the Radix or uh, I always say it wrong. I feel like there's a, a cool like English inflection you have to Radix. I, 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 I mean, look, I say Radix because Colin Radix. was the um, he was the the CEO of Modules. He's Irish, and I don't know if that's just the Irish way, but he used to say uh -huh. Radix, so I just say Radix. But a lot of people say Radix. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard Radix before, but when someone who like was a part of it says something, I try to like catch on to that. Yeah, I yeah. feel like the same with GIF, GIF. Like if you invented that thing, just tell us how it's it's supposed to be, right? Yeah, well, let's see. American English and <laughs> say it weird. <laughs> uh, so in the last two years, you've, you've kind of switched uh, areas, you've switched companies. Uh, are you okay to talk about you? You took a little pause at a place called Rainbow. Are you cool to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, we can talk about Rainbow. I mean, it was Rainbow was interesting. It was um, I was kind of like really into the whole Web three hype at the time. I was curious, and um, it was right at the moment where Modules was being acquired by WorkOS, and I was just like, man maybe this is the next big thing, you know, I, I don't know. I was just like quite involved in it from a, from a technological point of view, but also from the whole kind of NFT side of things. And then Mike reached out to me from Rainbow and, um, and they had a pretty good team working there with Mark, Mark Douglas. And I was like, man, that would be great. Like I just did stitches. He just did, um, a vanilla extract, you know, and now we're working together. Nice. <laughs> and um, so I worked there for a, for a few months. Then then there was like the Web three crash, and uh, 
And since then, I joined Raycast, which is interesting because I've been talking to Raycast since when I was at Modules, like even like months before Modules was about to be acquired. Like I didn't even know that that was going to happen. Uh, I, I was having a chat with Thomas and I was using Raycast. I was already talking about it publicly, so I actually really loved the product. And so I was almost joining Raycast like quite a few times until I actually did. But uh, I'm very glad I did. It definitely feels like the right decision. That's so are way. you doing developer experience there or what? what is your role at Raycast? So I was hired uh, basically a year ago. That's when I joined as a DX engineer, very similar to what I did at Rainbow with Rainbow Kit and at Modules with Stitches and Radix. So mainly focusing on, you know, growing the develop, developer ecosystem, helping developers build extensions for Raycast and improving the documentation, this type of stuff, you know, the DX do. Yeah. And, but actually, uh, I've not done much of that, to be honest, uh, because we realized that there were so many things that we could do in terms of like educating people on the product itself, and that would be more valuable at this point in time than just getting more developers onto the platform. Mm -hmm. And the development ecosystem was growing organically quite well, like month on month. So we felt, you know what, why don't we put more effort into making videos and educational content so we can, you know, spread the word about Raycast, let people know exactly what it is, because it's quite an abstract product for a lot of people, which by the way, Maybe people listening right now don't even know what Raycast is. So we can cover that in a minute. And uh, so I started doing more and more of that. And now I basically work on a team where it's the team that focuses on brand awareness, partnerships, um, content creation, and also a little bit of community growing. So very similar to like DevRel, Dev Advocacy role, just kind of all up in the air of what you're doing. but. Yeah, I use Raycast every day. I love it. The only thing I wish is that it was also on Windows so I could use it there too. That's coming though, huh? Is it? Okay, well, we're getting yeah. a little sneak peek. <laughs> I can't show you because I don't have a Windows machine, but you know, like uh, I think that's that's something that I can tell you that it's uh, it's going to happen. So very excited about I that. I think we better sign Brittany up as a... Uh... Uh, like a beta tester. Yeah, beta yeah. tester, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you on to uh, help test awesome. it out. Sure. Sweet. Well, this feels like a perfect segue to take a little pause for our sponsor, and uh, we'll come back and talk about Raycast. Cloudinary allows you to remove any unwanted backgrounds so you can reuse assets efficiently. You can also erase objects and people from images for placement in new experiences. For more engaging content, easily turn static images into dynamic animations and rely on smart cropping to always deliver assets with a focus on the most relevant objects to your brand. Cloudinary Programmable Media. Build faster with AI-powered image and video APIs. So we, we talked a little bit about Pedro and kind of his past and, and when we were talking about um, stitches from, from a few years ago and kind of his journey that led him all the way to Raycast at this point. But we really haven't talked about the actual product yet. Um, and I, I titled this and maybe we'll have to change it just based on our feedback. But I put Raycast, a launcher faster than F1. And I'm like, maybe people don't even know F1 is because we're all I was just going to ask, what is it? Yeah, so we might have to work on the title a little bit, but uh, yeah. in your words, can you break down what Raycast is for us? Yeah, so uh, the simplest way to explain Raycast is that it's basically a launcher, which is uh, your spotlight on a Mac, but much better. And when I say better, I just mean that it has a lot more features. It's built in a very extensible way. Developers can contribute to it by building extensions and connecting any sort of API uh, directly into Raycast. So uh, a lot of people refer to it as like your spotlight on steroids um, and stuff like See, that. So that's already you, a better title. <laughs> yeah, there you go. We can use that one as well. 
So, you know, uh, if you've used Alfred before, like I used to, uh, then it's very similar to Alfred in the sense that it's a spotlight replacement. But um, yeah, it's just built with like a very modern tech. And even for developers, uh, developers can build extensions on Raycast just using React, which is super cool, but everything is native. So it's a completely native Mac OS app. And even the extensions that you build in React are actually rendered in Swift, so it's all native. So React is just there as a way to make it easier for developers to author extensions. That's pretty wild to me. So I've heard of kind of like React Native coming out and, and things like that, but can you tell me more how they actually convert? It's not just JSX that they're writing, it's converting over to Swift, but it's a full-blown like React application or what does that look like? Well, it's basic. It's very simple. It's like a simple version of React Native, if you will. You know, we give you yeah. some APIs, some React APIs that you can work with, and you still get access to the normal React lifecycle and state uh, kind of hooks and stuff. Wow! And then we render. We give you these components that are kind of predefined, so you can't really do anything you want in it. So there's a bit of limitation in terms of like UI. Uh, obviously, this is by design. And then when you render these components internally, we kind of map them to the Swift equivalent. That's really interesting. That's the simple way. Like uh, there is an article about this written by Felix, who kind of architecture this whole thing, and he goes into like more technical details of how it works. And I'll send you the link later if you want to drop it in the in the description. Yeah. It's pretty interesting. Definitely do. That's that's cool. Um, so how does like, how does the technology behind Raycast differ from other launchers that you've seen? Um, I don't know much about that, to be honest, okay. because I don't really work on the app itself. I know that the app itself is built in uh, Swift. It's, it's like a native app. And the team That's behind it, they all come from this background. The both founders, Thomas and Peter, they come from a sort of like um, Swift background. They worked at Meta before. Um, but it just feels very modern, even in terms of like UI. When you use Raycast and you see how fast it is, how it looks, how, how, it, how well integrated it is into your Mac, how yeah. beautiful it is, it just feels great. What are, what are some of your favorite features on Raycast? Man, like at this point, I use so many features because like uh. I, I ended up becoming like, because uh, I'm doing so many videos teaching Raycast, I'm using like so many things. But if I try to detach myself from that a little bit, I think I would say clipboard history, number one. Yeah. <laughs> I can't really work without clipboard history anymore. It's okay, so the crazy part, I use this all the time myself. What blows my mind on it is it's not only just like text that you're using, every like image I've copied and everything else is in there. And then you can hit Command K and you can say, save this as a PNG. Like all those things you lost because you've like moved on 12 steps down the chain, it's in there and you can grab them. I yeah. had no idea that was a thing. <laughs> well, it's, you got to try I use it, it all the time and I had no idea. That's, that's probably one of my favorite features, but keep going. I, I want to like, hear. This is the best because it changes the way you work, right? We try to say that Raycast is a productivity tool. And in many ways, it makes you more productive because if you get used to, to working, knowing that you have Raycast in the background, it changes how you do something. So, for example, if you didn't know you had clipboard history, you'd be very aware of what you're copying because you know that you're overriding your clipboard, right? When you have Raycast, you just don't care. You just copy, yeah. copy, 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 yeah. and you know you can always access that. So I do that often, especially like when I'm filling in, uh, say, like a shipping uh, form for a delivery, and I need to copy like the address, you know, the postcode, uh, the state, whatever, just copy, 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 and then I go to the form and I can access it in, in, in yeah, my history. There's lots of times where I would be copying something and you would go back and forth and you would have exactly. to just toggle, but you could just copy all of it. <laughs> this exactly. may change my life. I use it main, I think primarily just as a launcher, just as a launch replacement to open applications and navigate right. around the system. But right. Still good though. But there's, you know there's so much more you can do with it. You gotta watch videos. <laughs> yeah. 
What, so uh, let's keep going down kind of your top 10 because I feel 10. I feel like I'm I'm between Brittany and you. Like I I use some clipboard history. I actually use some community plugins, which we should talk about as cool. well. But I don't think I'm I'm like way over here where I've done enough. All right. Like let's go. Let's let's go down. Let's go through the list. So clipboard history, window management, because these two I use all the time. Um AI chat. Oh, Quick tell AI. me more about that one. What's what's that like? Is that guy like Gemini embedded already? So uh, not Gemini, uh, but we do have a few different GPT models and uh, Aphrodite, I think we have as well. So you can configure the model, but basically it's like chat GPT in, in Raycast in the sense that it's like a chat interface. Uh, the cool thing with it is that like with every command in Raycast, you can assign a hotkey. So I can press option A on my keyboard and I get the chat window popping up. And this is great because it starts touching on, on this sort of um, uh, kind of lack of context switching. Mm -hmm. Like if you think about using ChatGPT in your browser, say you're in code and you're doing something in code and you want to ask something, you've got to switch from VS Code or whatever editor you use to your browser, then to the tab. And then you got to ask the stuff you want to ask. And then you got to go all the way back. Whereas when you do just option A, you have a floating window that just sits there and you do what you have to do, press option A again or whatever hockey you want, and then you're back. So you're never switching between spaces or windows or apps. And does, um, it, does it keep a history of that kind of flowing through? Okay. Yeah, it keeps not just a history of a single chat, but it keeps a history of many chats so you can have as many chats as you want. Wow. Okay. And with each chat, you can configure a bunch of stuff. You can configure like the creativity, the model, and the system instructions. So system instructions allows you to give that specific chat a very strict set of rules of how you want it to respond. So that allows you to create assistance. So I have one that is like my TypeScript React assistant. So whenever I need to ask anything about React TypeScript, I just open that one and I never have to give any context. I just go, right. hey, how do I do this? And he already knows how I want the answer. You know and just, I mean? just for clarity, like that's a pro plan thing, right? So AI, anything AI related is part of Raycast Pro. Sure, because you so guys have to pay them, right? <laughs> Clipboard history, window management, that's just free. You get that with Raycast. Uh, AI, obviously, it's very expensive for us to use AI, especially now, such a new thing. So that's uh, something that we charge for. So we've got, in, in the AI suite, we've got, that's nice. Can you see that as well? I can. Yeah. Who did that? Yeah. I saw someone else do this. <laughs> so we've got AI chat, we've got quick AI, which is basically just open up Raycast, you ask something, press tab, and you get your answer. So that's just like a very quick way. That's not a conversational thing, right? It's just like, oh man, you know, what year was Steve Jobs born in? You can just ask that, press tab, and you get it. That's awesome. And that's cool because if AI doesn't know the answer to that, which happens often, usually the cutoff date is like, September 2021, I think that's the latest cutoff yeah. day. I think, I think OpenAI just pushed it a little bit. Let me turn this off. This like you know reactions here. There you go. If you do okay, does that work too? Oh, I turned it off now. <laughs> <laughs> I um, saw someone else with this. I'm like, what button are you hitting? They're like, no, it just does it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, if if it's a question that AI doesn't know about, then we actually search the web we gather all the answers and then we use AI to kind of condense and wow. give you the best answer possible. Uh, so that's kind of the AI suite, AI chat, quick AI and AI commands. So I use this all the time. I have special commands for different things. Commands are great if you wanna, if you wanna like automate some stuff, you know? So I have a command that converts uh, style objects into vanilla CSS. So oh, wow. if I'm writing just like CSS and JS, and I want to just add that to a global style sheet, I highlight that object, press command space, search for my AI command, and it does it, you know? It just does it using AI. Wow. So, yeah, how many have we done? Five. Uh, <laughs> then I do the Spotify player. So that's oh. just the extension I use to control Spotify. And what I, I love need, about I that I need one, that one. That's a good one. You does that, that integrate one? with other music oh. services? 
the Spotify one is just for Spotify. Uh, I do believe there is one for Apple Music as well. Okay. I hope there's a Google one too. But what I love about that is that you can actually build a Raycast extension that mounts a command on your menu bar where you know where your clock is and stuff. Mm-hmm. So suddenly there is like an, a new app on your Mac, but actually it's just a Raycast extension, right? So the Spotify player will add a little icon on there with what's currently being played. So nice. this is really nice because whenever you're listening to music, especially if you're listening to like some stuff on shuffle and you don't know what it is, you can just glance up there and you know what's playing. And from there you can pause, you can skip, you can do a bunch of stuff. So that's super useful. Would you yeah. recommend that I, I just did a quick search there's Spotify controls or Spotify player? This would be Spotify player, this one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I'm in this one recently that. became our most popular extension. I think now it has 60,000 installs. Yeah, it does. That's incredible. Yeah. Well done, uh, Artem Kanavalov. So Artem, he used to work at Raycast, and okay. he built that extension while he was working here. And since then, the extension grew so much, and then loads of other people contributed to it. You guys had to hire him back, right? So I had to cough. So it's like your most uh, uh, most popular extension. You had to hire him back. Tell him to come back in. Yeah, man. Artem is great. I talk to him <laughs> all the time, actually. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, where yeah. are we at? Like five-ish? Yeah, five or six. Uh, I can say a couple more. A is, couple there, more. is there also a way to like look at your most popular when you're out in kind of the, the Raycast world? You mean like myself or anybody? Anyone, like the extensions that are kind of, here's the, the top 10 for the everyone. Most popular, like list on the site. You can, you can filter by like, um, you can sort by popular, I believe. Okay. I'll and, pick um, up. Sorry, I keep breaking your flow. Go to your next no, one. No worries, man. <laughs> no, no, feel free to, to say anything. Um, I also use the color picker, which is really cool. So yeah. basically just like I have that assigned to like option command P and then I just get a little magnifying glass. I can click anywhere and it selects that color. And that's great. I use that all the time. That is that works on the web. I, well, anything at your screen, I assume, right? Is that one a yeah. third party extension? Yeah. Okay. I need to get that one because I, I was looking for something like that. I use power toys on windows right now. And so they have like a color picker, like I want. And I was looking for that in Raycast and I only saw the digital color meter and it does not do what I want. <laughs> and so uh, I need to get that one. Yeah, yeah. No, this is uh this is a pretty cool extension because it's a Raycast extension, but it actually uses a Swift kind of uh, let's say a Swift app inside of it. So the color picker experience that's on your screen that's all done in Swift, but you can actually render Swift stuff inside of Raycast extension. So it, oh, it can get really like powerful in that sense. Wow. There's something called color casket too. There's mm. so many things. There's so many now. I'm struggling to keep up with them. I think now we have over 1,300 extensions. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. On top of all the things that we're already building. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, there's so many, man. Like, let me open up Raycast see here. Oh, Vercel deployments. I use that all this, especially when I was building my website. Oh my gosh, I need that. So I just open up Raycast, type in search deployments, and I can see all of my deployments, and I can see which ones failed. I can preview them. So that's really cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, I I build mostly on Netlify. I used to work for Netlify, so I use their CLI for everything. Does Vercel not have a CLI? They do. They have to. Okay. But there's a Netlify one as well. There's a Netlify extension. Oh, there's a Netlify extension? Oh, interesting. Okay, I'll have to check it out because being able to see multiple deploys and why they failed and like that stuff would be, would be good. Yeah, there is a Netlify one. I worked with uh, with Phil on getting that one uh, as, a, as, a, as a sort of like verified extension. We have a few oh, extensions cool. that we worked with the kind of vendor, let's say. Yeah. And uh, we help kind of review them and make sure that it's great. We help maintain them if we need to. And uh, Netlify is one of them. Yeah, cool. Phil was my old boss. So. Yeah, I work. I used to work with him, you know. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. 
way back in RGA in London. We worked together. Awesome. He was my yeah, boss as well. Great. He was a great boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm forgetting there's like a secondary pop up and then you have to click install. So I'm like, why are these none of these working? Yeah. Cool. But then, uh, man, there's, there's so many extensions now, you know, like uh, the, the Apple Reminders extension is really nice, really, really smooth. Um, just looking here, we have a few private extensions that I use all the time. And basically, if you have a Raycast team, say like, um, you know, a coding cat team for you for you it's to a good do team it. folks it's a good team yeah. then you can create snippets quick links and extensions that only people in your team can access and that's really cool so for example we created an extension that allows anybody in raycast to browse all of the videos we've uploaded to youtube so whenever we see anybody on twitter say asking about mm -hmm. something we just go, oh, by the way, we, we know we have a video about this. Instead of going to the browser, open up YouTube, click oh. on channel, click on videos and find that video. You just open up Raycast, search Raycast videos. All of our videos are there. Press enter. That copies the URL and you paste. So it's this little like workflow boosts that helps so much. I'd like that. I always go out to our site and then hit command K because I have that built into it to search for like the people that have been on or like an episode. But it would be neat on Raycast to be able to just in the like coding cat space, go to a, a Spotify link, a, a, like a blog post, like the people on like all of the sphere of coding cat or like whatever business, you know, you have to be able to just search within that would be sweet in my mind. Yeah. I mean, if coding cat has an API, you can put an extension together where it lists all your episodes, allows people to listen to them on different platforms. You can yeah, do that. We Basically, the way the search is, it's an API that just has all of our kind of broken down pieces for it. So I'll have to look into that. That'd be really cool. Yeah, that'd be cool. So yeah, man, that's basically what I do. Like, obviously, I do a lot of other stuff. But, you know, I think that these are the things I use very, very often. Yeah. I like it. That's really neat. I just saw a Tailwind one. I'm just going to start using Raycast for everything and never go to the web again. Like, it's just going to be, instead of Google, I'm just going to Raycast it. That's going to be a yeah. nice thing. Raycast oh, I like that. it. That sounds great. I like that. I, I'm like so trained into like Divi. I almost want to like go down the Raycast mode of like window management. I just can't get myself to break into it because. I'm like so trained to the button. I use right rectangle here. and I have key commands set up with rectangle that I'm very familiar with. And so switching out of that sounds scary to me. I'm like, yeah, I, okay. I know how to do this. Yeah, I use rectangle as well, actually. That was great. I use rectangle and I used, oh, I don't remember. But I used a few different, but keep in mind that every command in Raycast is configurable. So. Right. We even offer like for window management, we even offer like uh, some presets of other popular apps. So I think you can select the pre rectangle presets mm -hmm. uh, to kind of get you started. Not trying to move you away from rectangle. Rectangle is great. And if it does the job for you, then definitely continue to use rectangle. But a lot of people like to minimize the number of apps they have installed on their machine. Yeah. And that's one of the things that people really like about Raycast. They're like, you can take, Typically, you can like uninstall like, you know, a handful of apps from your yeah. Mac. Without getting like names away or anything like that, um, you talked a little bit about Raycast for Teams. What are some of the other things that they're kind of utilizing? And is there a lot of programming involved that, you know, Teams are, are getting into? What does that look like? So... The Teams is mainly a way that everybody in the org can kind of share some of the common commands in Raycast. Like we obviously have a team for our private extensions, but also for snippets and quick links. So, you know, especially for support, right? If you think about support, like there are hundreds of people that raise the same issues all the time. And we want to have like a way to automate the answers and also make sure that they're consistent. So a lot of the answers would be stored in snippets. So everybody in the team can access and you can search snippets. Um, the same with like hiring process. You know, imagine when you're hiring and you're dealing with like hundreds of applications. Then we have some snippets to help us with that. 
And quick links is a way that uh, whenever anybody needs to open up a link in a specific service, say like we use, um, uh, we use like, um, let me find out the name here because now I forgot, uh, Sentry. Let's say we use Sentry for like tracking our errors in the apps and stuff yep. and checking how the health of the app is. And we have a few Sentry links and sometimes like you got to open up Sentry, find out where the project is, click on that. So you just open Raycast and you search uh, for that and that surf that's surfaced in the root search. So all of these little links for like Dropbox, uh, Notion, specific Notion pages, everything is in Raycast. And that's just internal to us. So usually that's why, and that's that's the one of the main reasons that companies would kind of sign up for Teams. How does it make that connection? Like with Notion, I uninstalled the app because the app was very buggy for me. And I still have the web, but I never go to it anymore. And there are some things like I need to look up. Does it like connect to your account on the web? And would it search without having the app installed? So there is a Notion extension that does that. You basically install the Notion extension, log in with Notion, and then you can search your Notion mm. documents, right? Cool. But Quick Links is a bit more manual. It's like you have to create a Quick Link and you paste in the URL that you want that Quick Link to open. Gotcha. You know? But a Quick Link can open a specific URL, but it can also open like a, a, a path in Finder. So I have a quick link to open my downloads folder, which is something I open like 50 times a day. So when I press option D, my downloads folder opens. And you can also do quick links to open files in Figma, for example. So you can set like a Figma URL and you can say open with Figma. So if you imagine you work in an organization and you have like a design system Figma file. Instead of always going to Figma and browsing, you just go Raycast design system, enter and he opens that directly in Figma. So these are the little things that you kind of got to do to kind of make the most out of Raycast and especially out of the org. I feel like we have a lot of work to do in terms of showing companies how much time they could save from each sort of employee if they implemented Raycast properly in, and made the most out of it. That's something I want to do more next year, see how I can give some practical examples of that, you know, and try to quantify how much time they'd save. Yeah, that would be awesome. Quantifying that would be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's probably the, the toughest part that you'll run into. Um, yeah. I do want to kind of go back into or dive into a little further. You were talking about like React and, and how to actually develop. I'm going to bring up just for our own guide, um, if someone's getting started into that, and hopefully we can walk through what that is like. Um, so here's the the getting started page. It looks like it's simple as Node.js, uh, NPM, and React is, is all you need. Um, can you talk me through like what a typical flow looks like and how it gets accepted into the store too? Yeah, definitely. So. There are a few ways to create an extension. You can create it completely from scratch. If you follow the docs, it will give you like the, the instructions of the dependencies you got to install. But there's also a command called create extension, right? So Raycast is very reliant on itself. So almost everything you can do inside of Raycast. So if you do exactly, so this is how we kind of advise the people do it. So if you open up Raycast, the create extension, you can pick uh, the organization that you want it to belong to in case you have one. Then you can just give it a name and you can, you can pick a template. We have a few templates that just give you like a little, a little template so you can get started with something. And then you press enter. That's going to create the file with the dependencies, everything for you. That's ready to go, right? From that moment on, it's about you kind of building the extension that you want to build. That's cool. So and it, is it is it literally as, as simple as I mean how much React is involved versus not I guess it's very simple man like and let me wow. see if I can show you an example like um, if you go to if you go on the left mm -hmm. if you scroll down a little bit right we have examples right can you see this one like a Hacker News or To Do List Hacker News is usually a good one yeah that's a good one because that has API right has an API call. So if you scroll down, you can get a, 
a bit of an idea of what the code looks like, right? This is just React, right? You can imagine that instead of using Raycast, it's using like, um, let's say it's using like Shad CN UI or some design system like Radix Teams or whatever. Sure. You basically just have some TypeScript stuff, nothing fancy there. You have some state, just React, right? You have an effect, just React. And then you have this little fetch stories, right? This yeah. is the only thing that's a bit like custom there. And I think later down in the in this example, we'll show you what the code for that is. It's funny, you guys even have things like show toast and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, we have all like feedback UI as well. So looking at this, you see, it's just basically, you're just rendering React. The only thing you got to know is what are the components that are available to you, yep. right? Typically, is you've got a list, and inside the list, you've got list items, but you can also have a grid in case you don't want to render as a list. There's also a detail view, right? It's a design then, system for Raycast. Yeah. Exactly. It's literally a design system. That's literally what it is. That's really neat. I love it. Yeah, and then when you know when you do Command K to get some extra actions, yep. that's that bit you see at the top here, action panel dot section. Oh, okay. These are the actions, and when you render that in a list item, they can be contextual. So different list items or grid items can have different actions. Typically, the first action in your list will be mapped to enter. So whenever you press enter, that's the first one. That's how we kind of that's the heuristic behind it. Very simple, and the second one will be Command Enter. Okay. Yep. Very neat. I love this. Um, there's there's probably one other kind of concept, and maybe it's not on this page, but you can kind of guide me to the right place. Um, there's theming that is involved in Raycast as well. Is that both something that's kind of pre-baked and delivered, or do you theme like per user? What does that look like? So uh, we recently launched Raycast themes as part of the pro plan as well. So um, users can basically change the theme of Raycast because up until then, it was just light or dark. And that's fine, like, to be mm -hmm. honest, most of the time I'm using the dark one, the default out of the box. But when you open something so many times a day, it's nice that you can kind of just tweak it a little bit to make it more your own. People love to express themselves yeah. through themes, right? I've got to put my AJ logo on there so I can stare at it all the time. <laughs> Like, you know, even West Boss, he, he brought his uh, Cobalt 2 theme to Raycast. So that's <laughs> of the course he did. As well. <laughs> that's okay. And uh, it's pretty cool. But basically, each user chooses their own theme. And that's basically how it works. It's basically like setting your theme in VS Code, right? But you got to be a pro subscriber. And um, which we'll see mine in a little bit. And, and we all know that everybody has their own like flavor of theme that they like. <laughs> Yeah, and, you, and it's funny, like we saw, we, we launched themes and I didn't really know how sort of successful that was going to be, let's say. But we put together a little website called themes.ray.so and that's basically a directory that allows us to share lots of themes that people have designed for Raycast. And we did that by building like a fake version of Raycast just in, in web, like using Tailwind and stuff. And then we take the theme from Raycast and we render it here. So this became a way that you can just sort of browse Raycast themes. And it was that was a super fun little project to make. Yeah. I uh, bet. This reminds me of what uh, Peru did with the Mac OS and like moving it. He did it in React first and then moved it to Svelte and built the whole Mac OS system, basically. Cool. Oh, I haven't seen that. I'd love to see Yeah. That. Oh, you haven't seen that? I'll have to find the link for you because that would be cool if you could put that behind this so you could see like that with Raycast and oh, what it does. Yeah, definitely. Sorry, I'm jotting down a few links here. <laughs> um, I'm curious, and, and this is probably just Alex being Alex, but um, how can you change the like opacity setting? Is that a thing? Like, I just want that back of the Raycast, like, thing itself not to be so shiny. Is that weird? You want it to be less uh, transparent? Yes. Thank you. That's the uh, one. Let me I check just put it in the chat there. It's macos-web.app if anybody 
at home listening is interested in seeing I think that. you just picked um, another perfect pick we might have to yeah, go. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But not oh, you've got some like parameters there that you probably need to remove. I don't know what that is. There you go. Oh, that's wild. And oh, everything good. works. Everything and works. And that's built with uh, Svelte, you said. Yeah, now it is. It was React and he moved oh. it to Svelte, yeah. Oh, oh that's, that's always nice. These aren't working, but that's okay. Yeah. Oh, well, the, I don't think those have like things that pop up, but all the apps at the bottom work. Oh, Sorry. I can't, I can't like interact with anything. Oh, Anyways, well, that's, that's I fun. guess that would be cool if he added that. that it would be cool if we added Raycast there as well as a joke. Yeah. <laughs> you should. Yeah. I, I sense a PR coming. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's funny. Like, I actually started building a Raycast simulator, which is basically similar to what you've just seen in the themes, like a web version of Raycast, but it kind of works. You know, so it's a way to kind of use it in our docs. So the docs become a bit more interactive. And that's something I've been wanting to do since I joined, but haven't gotten around, haven't gotten around to doing that yet. That sounds amazing. Uh, what else am I missing, Pedro? I, f I feel like we've done a decent job, but Raycast is like one of these tools that something's lurking behind the corner that you just forget about all the time. Is there anything else that we haven't hit? I mean, there's always more to talk about, you know, especially when a tool is so sort of broad like Raycast is. But I like what you said that is in the background. It's designed to be there. We don't want it to like catch your attention too much, you know. But it's one of those things that like whenever you need to do something, chances are that Raycast can help you with that. And that's that's where it becomes quite magical in a way. Like even sometimes I'm surprised. I'm like, oh, let me just try that. I'm like, oh, wow, that works, you know? And I, and I use Raycast like quite a lot, especially like the calculator. Like obviously Spotlight has a calculator, right? You can do two times two, yep. you know, five plus five or whatever. But the cool thing about Raycast is that calculator is so good, you know? Like, and it, it keeps, I use like the one. history of it. So it's... yeah. And I'm constantly doing like window dimensions and <laughs> dividing them out for whatever reason. And yeah. it's Let's talk the pricing of Pro too, because that is surprisingly cheap. I expected sure. it to be much more yeah. than that. Like it's like Discord, uh, what's nit Nitro? It's like a little less than that actually. Yeah, so there's an extra charge if you want access to GPT-4, things that, that yeah. API is so expensive, but... Um, Aside from that, yeah, it's eight dollars a month if you do an annual kind of uh, payment. Otherwise, it's ten. Are we are we at a cup of coffee? Is eight dollars yet? Is that a Starbucks? <laughs> it's pretty close, depending Starbucks on the kind level. of coffee you drink. Yeah, I mean, definitely like eight dollars here. Like, yeah, a cup of coffee here is like three fifty. He'll definitely pay for four weeks of coffee. So there you go. You'll probably be yeah. able to ask how to make coffee soon, I would assume, in you know, the chat. So just do that. Yeah, the thing is, like, one thing that's interesting is, like, so many apps are integrating AI, right? Yeah. Like, that's just going to happen more and more and more. It's not sustainable for everybody to pay a membership for every app they use because they right. want AI. And the thing with Raycast is because it sits at the operating system level, you can use Raycast AI on any app you want, right? You can use it on Notion. You can use it on Twitter. You can use it on, like, any oh, writing app that you I use, you know, yep. notes. If you uh, want to pay for Twitter's API. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, not even. You don't even have to because, like, if you have Twitter open and you just want, like, oh, help me make this tweet a bit shorter or a bit more. Oh, punchy, okay, yeah. Whatever it is. You just use Using it in that way. Yeah, but not directly through Twitter. I was trying to make a very bad joke about how no, but we, you know what we, we had a Twitter extension that I don't think it works anymore because of the API price yeah. change. Well that's quite sad in a way. It is. Uh, yeah. It's sad a ton of extensions have gone away because of the pricing. I don't I don't know like is he just trying to kill it off? I think so. I don't know man. I have no it idea. Like Reddit follows follow the similar path, no? And mm. some big apps like Apollo. I think Apollo, I think it was called, that kind of dropped yeah. out. That was a shame. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they just started charging for their API too, right? Yeah. Like crazy like prices. 
a bunch yeah. of things on like strike kind of like they just they said they weren't going to post for a while because of that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we dropped all of our Twitter ads and membership and all that stuff, so Yeah. You and so, everyone else. <laughs> not coding cat by the way. We've never we've never Yeah, done. I mean, you're company. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, okay. You heard how Elon feels about that, so Yes, I, I try not to put that language in this talk, but yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Anyways, uh, we're going to switch gears over to our perfect picks. And I am so distraught right now. I forgot mine. So Brittany, can you go for it? Yeah. Do you want to share my screen and I will go I ahead do. and talk about it. So mine is spelt component documentation, which is, I think, believe, don't quote me on this, it's baked into this felt for VS Code um, extension that you have. So you have to use VS Code, you have to use the felt for VS Code extension, but you can write component documentation in a comment and at, com at component, and then you can just start writing markdown. And when you write the markdown, that then gets put into the component IntelliSense. So when you hover over the component, you can then read that documentation directly over the component, which I think has been super helpful building a design system that you put out to people. You want them to be able to easily access the documentation without having to go anywhere. Talking about context switching this whole podcast and this like prevents them from having to go anywhere. They can see how to use the component what props to use for different types, um, all of the props listed out, the descriptions just by hovering over the components. Fantastic. Nice. Yeah, that's really nice. I didn't even know this was possible. It's it's so And crazy. what did I say the name of my theme was, by the way? It's like Aura. And I, I think I use sweet VS Code icons. So <laughs> we're talking about themes too. Yeah. That's nice. Uh, I apologize in advance because I, I can't find the dark mode on this site, but here you go. Um, I obviously I, I'm in auth and I'm checking out auth articles all the time, but I wrote a serverless database post, uh, I don't know, a month or two back. And I've always been kind of checking out EdgeDB because I love that you can like spin it up on your own, how powerful it is. Like I can go on and on and on about it. But then they said they had this auth thing and I was like, wait, what? Um, and you can literally put right now just OAuth basic, and I think social auth um, into EdgeDB. So you can basically spin this up on your own. You don't have to worry about like Firebase and like, you know, you hit it a million times, you start costing yourself money. This is basically free. You can spin it up on fly.io or AWS, which would cost money as well, but you, you get the idea. Like you could go crazy with this thing. But now they also have included um, authentication directly in the platform, which kind of blew me away. So um, you can actually use, or soon you'll be able to use Fusion Auth in here as well. Um, so you can spin up a Fusion Auth instance and use them as your full customer identity management side of things, and then just kind of call out to them using OAuth too. So it's it's pretty wild that they have this like integration going for it. Um, I think they're kind of following along. I'm waiting for like functions to occur next, and then they're going to have like a whole suite similar to like AppRite or Supabase or or any of those that are kind of mm -hmm. floating around now. So definitely check that out. Pedro, putting putting you on the spot. I, I know you said one, and I can't remember what it was now. Yeah, I know. Uh, I should have come more more prepared, but um, the one I have. Shall I share my screen or just say, uh, or maybe you can open up in your browser. I sure will. So it's basically Vercel's open graph image generation. So if you just Google Vercel open graph image generation, that is something that I don't know, man. I just love that, you know, like I've been a big fan of, of this technique for, for ages. And I was rebuilding my website and I used that to kind of or dynamically generate the open graph image for the articles I write. Mm -hmm. You know, so they can so when you share them, still has some kind of relevant image. Um, but also for the themes dot ray dot so that website that you were on before, there are so many themes, right? When you share a, a, a URL, it also generates the the raycast image for you, so you can share a theme and people can preview them. And 
even though this is marketed as like an open graph image generation, like this is so much more powerful than that. You know? It's nice to be able to see the preview for that because yeah. that is one of the hardest things with open graph is being yeah. able to like style it exactly the way you want and know what it's going to look like when you put exactly. it out. Exactly. And it's so easy. Like you can see here, like it's so easy to do, right? Is but there a way to like change them dynamically? Somebody was talking about this recently and they wanted to have a different background for everyone. Yeah, you can change it 100%. Like oh. If if you think about this just being an endpoint, like say uh, ped.ro, ped that's my website, ped.ro slash OG, that gives you the endpoint to, that would, it's like if you do slash OG, that would be the endpoint for the image generation thing, right? And then, you see? So that's just the image, and it's a blurry image with no text in it. And yeah. the text is passed in through a query string. I don't remember what the query string is now, to be honest. I think it's if you do question mark um, con text, maybe. Yeah, maybe text. <laughs> it's something like this. Or title, maybe, maybe it'll be title, I think. <laughs> I don't know. And that's how you pass in like dynamic content. Uh, there it is. Right? Sweet. And so the dynamic content can be like the URL of the image that you want it to display in the background. Oh, okay. So then you could just change the image based on <laughs> what you're but like this is marketed as an open graph thing, right? But really, it can be an endpoint that generates any image you want, any size that you want, and okay. it's just really nice. I just love that. I wonder how different this is from using Cloudinary like we do. That's what I was gonna. Oh, ask. do you? I've never yeah. used it, so I don't know. Yeah. So in Cloudinary, it's it's very similar. They do have like all the APIs and everything to create things like this, and we used to back when. The Twitter API was available. We take and when when you like scheduled your talk, we'd ask for your Twitter um, handle or just like your full Twitter URL. It would take that out and go grab your picture, and then it would take our background in Cloudinary and just stick it in, put your picture on it, and That's put our cool. title that we're working on, and boom, we were done. We didn't have yeah. to do we didn't, didn't no have to do more. images. Um, cool. This feels we very can use cool. GitHub's API for that now. Oh, like use because we're basically asking everyone their GitHub address. Yeah, we could yeah use so I mean, we could use that. Uh, they have like an avatar link that you can just get the image URL for people. Yeah, I don't really, know. I, I sense a live coding session. Yeah, <laughs> topic. Yeah. yeah, that's a that's a great idea because now the the only tricky part we'll have to see how to pull. Right now, I'm using. We switched off of. I tried to like reduce cost down. We switched off of Calendly as well um, because Google's scheduling has mm -hmm. come a long ways. Um, mm -hmm. So that schedule is out there. And once that books, I actually get an email. So we'd have to figure out what that flow looks like or that API because mm -hmm. we could theoretically, I think, use the Google Calendar API. Um, yeah, I'm sure they Now you got to. me really thinking about this. That's a good point. Yeah. I forgot about the GitHub connection. Automation, like that's how we win at this game of like yeah. content. <laughs> There's there's so much to the scheduling and creating of images, it's unbelievable. So yeah. this, this is a good solution too. The one thing on Vercel, I feel like I, I get nervous on is how many additional things that Vercel keeps adding, and I'm like, oh yeah, if I want to do a mono repo and host four sites, I should probably get on the team plan. Well, that's mm -hmm. just twenty bucks, right? And then mm -hmm. it's like. I want to do this other thing with their database. That's just X dollars. And now I want to do this OG image thing. And that's just X dollars. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like all of a sudden I need a different package because this is getting out of control. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. And maybe you're worried that at some point you're too deep into an ecosystem, then it's hard to get out. Yeah. And I will say, like, I'm probably too deep into the Cloudinary ecosystem, but um, I'm a yeah. Cloudinary. Uh, ambassador, so like they're like, here's a lot of credits, and I'm oh, like, oh, that's cool. that helps, right? <laughs> helps a lot, yeah. So they're they're good people over there, though. Uh, shout Definitely. out, Colby. We've been yes. chatting. I use, I use Cloudinary to optimize my video. He took it from. I have Space Jelly. Place. You can see Space Jelly right there. <laughs> what is that? That's Colby's mascot, Space Jelly. Oh, uh, what's his? It's what's Colby's site. Do you remember? Is it? Spacejelly.com or something? Spacejelly.dev, I think. Uh, yeah, so here, check these out, Pedro. These are cool. 
not seen yeah. that before. I like yeah. the title. Keep keep their ways. That's quite cool. Cosmo. That's yeah. nice. But who is who's doing this? Like Colby this... Fayot, he's the the head oh, of Dev over at Cloud. Yeah, 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 yeah. Is, is he the guy that has a Brazil flag in his bio? Ooh. Um, potentially because his wife is Brazilian, I believe. Oh, that's why I always wondered that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He seems like a very uh nice person. He's a great guy. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he likes to shut it down at like five too, because uh, I think he's taking care of the kid. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get that. I get that. Soon yeah. I'll have to do the same. Oh, is there congratulations? Oh, no, no, I already had the kid last time we spoke. Oh, oh okay. Now. I thought you were having another one. <laughs> yeah. No, you're like, no. I'm going to have to do that soon. And we thought you meant like you're having a baby, but you meant you're no, going to. No, have no, no, no. I have I'm to be soon. Pick already. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're in the future, as we, we yeah. like to say on the show. Yeah. Yes. Nice. Living All in right. on the other side. Well, thank you once again, Pedro, for coming on. We really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully you can show off some more Raycast tidbits to us in the future. Or like one of, I feel like you released like a new UI kit of some kind, like every other year. So maybe we can check that out too. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that would be a good live coding session too. Have Pedro come on and do an extension, build an extension. Yeah, thank definitely. you so much. We can we can do the coding cut extension live if you. I, I would love to like build that. That sounds good. We'll get that scheduled up after the show. That'll be fun. Uh, we've just released a video on our YouTube channel last week where I'm building an extension live as well. That was the first video that we did in that sort of. I haven't seen that. What's the YouTube up? channel? Where it's just it? uh, Raycast app. YouTube.com slash Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to have um, to go check a bunch of those out too. Cause yeah, I check it out. We've been putting a video every week. You know, we, so our videos are getting quite frequent now. We have a video editor, Bruno, also who's taking the video right to now. the next level. So we don't, uh, we don't talk about Bruno, right? Yeah, no, that's exactly what I said to uh, Thomas when we were hiring him. <laughs> nice. I haven't heard that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you said that. All right, folks. Well, we will catch Pedro and everyone else next time. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.